Okay, today we're going to make a stop motion video that looks something like this. Let's play it. So the rice is going to crawl in and it's going to spell out got rice. There we go. So this was taken from a series of still images that we're going to bring into Photoshop. Let's take a look at my original images. So these were shot with a camera that takes uh, 10 megapixel uh, images. So these images are going to be very big for your movie. Uh, so what I did, uh, one of the techniques that you can use is you can use your uh, image processor and you can scale these down. So if you want to do that, uh, you can just select everything. Right through Bridge, you can go to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor. And over here, you can put in, I want these to be 640 by 480. So the um, I'm going to say 640 for the longest dimension. And this will uh, scale it down to 640 as the as the width and then the height will just be scaled down proportionally but I already did this so we don't have to wait for this to go through I'm just gonna click cancel let me go back to bridge so uh, let's go to my other folder here here's where my images are already done so when I did this actually me and my wife did this uh, we did it in reverse order we had the uh, message already made and then we slowly destroyed it as we went through. So I'm hitting, I'm going through bridge. I just hit my space bar and I'm using my arrow keys to tap through. So this is what it's going to look like. Something like this. Now, first thing we should do is look through the frame, see if there's any frames we want to get rid of because there are a couple of ones like this one over here. This one has my finger in it. Let's make these bigger so you can see it better. So this one looks like a trace from my finger. I'll just delete it. And I think there's another one near the end. So let me just zip along to the end here. Oh, he has some fingers over here. So let's get rid of these. So what we need to do, we need to put these in a numbered sequence in the sequence that we want them to appear. So right now, these are in the wrong sequence. And also, because we deleted a couple images, there's gonna be a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rename these images. And we could do that through Bridge also. All I have to do is, is reverse the sort order, which we can do in Bridge up on the top here. There we go. So this is the order that I want them to go into. I want this one here, 287, to be first. Control A, Tools, Batch Rename. And remembered my settings. Here's my preview. So the largest number image is getting number one. And the lowest number image is getting... Uh, the highest number down here, 107. So just click rename. This does it very fast. So there we go. Uh, now we just have to order, put them back in reverse order now. There we go. So now number one is up here. Uh, now we can go back to Photoshop. Go to Photoshop, File, Open. These are on my desktop. Rice sequence, 640 by 480 rice. Now you just select any one of these. And on the bottom here, you should be able to check this box here, image sequence. Click open. Now this is gonna make a movie for us right away. So we have like 107 images I think 15 frames per second will be okay. Click OK. And here we go. It makes a nice movie for us. I have my timeline open. If I hit my space bar, there you go. You can see it happening. Now we have a couple of problems. 
Uh, one of the things is we have that a uh, dot in the in the middle there. Uh, this my wife was using for reference, so we have to get rid of that. So we're going to have to retouch this uh, frame by frame. This we can do actually very quickly. Um, Playhead came back to the beginning. In this case, I think we can just use the spot healing brush tool. And all I have to do is uh, click on the black dot here, then hit my right arrow key. I have my shortcuts turned on in my timeline. Enable timeline shortcuts. So now I can just click the mouse, hit the arrow, click the mouse, hit the arrow. So if you get a little uh, rhythm going, you can do this pretty quickly. I'm going to pause the video because you don't have to watch me do this over and over again. Okay, uh, I think I got everything. So now we still have a couple of problems here. Uh, well, we have this, uh, these are the legs of my tripod are showing. And also, uh, we have this ugly green background here. So what I want to do is, uh, I want to take this, I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. Ooh, looks like I missed one. And we're going to bring it into Premiere to get rid of the green background and also to make a mask and mask out the, the tripod. Okay, I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro uh, CC 2017. I opened up a new sequence. Let's bring in our uh, Photoshop file. I'll double click down here. There's my Photoshop file open. We want this to be a sequence. Okay. Let's hit the uh, list view. Uh, and here's a made a sequence for me. I'll just double click. And here's our movie. Put it on video one. Now I, I'm going to need another track. Actually, I want this to be, uh, I want to put another track beneath it because we're going to put it in a new background. So I can right click. And I can say add, add track, put it up on top. Uh, I'll just drag this up. There we go. And I'm going to make a background. I'm going to go up here to file, new, color matte. These settings don't really matter. It's going to be the same size as everything else. Okay, we'll just pick out uh, color, maybe, all right, I think red will be easy to see what's going on. And then later we're going to change that mat to a gradient. So I'll call it mat one. Okay. I'll drag this beneath our little movie here and just lengthen it so that it's the same length. And now uh, we're going to try to put a chroma key on this image here. Uh, let's find a good spot for us. Yeah, I guess near the end would be good. Uh, I'm going to apply the ultra key. So I'm going to go to my effects down here in the corner. Uh, the easiest way to find that is to type in the word ultra. And here we go, ultra key. I'll drag it on top of my clip over here. Nothing happens until we set the key color because it could, doesn't have to be green. It could be anything you want, but green is pretty standard. I'll click the green. There we go. Uh, now it's a little messed up over here. The best thing to do is to flip from composite to alpha channel. And now we can fix this up. Well, there's a built-in setting that might help us right off the bat. I'll click aggressive. There we go. And now let's see if we can uh, adjust this with the matte generation. Uh, I might want to change pedestal. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it definitely helps. Uh, probably shadow is going to help me out. That looks pretty good. I think that might do it. Let's switch back to composite. And I'm just going to zip through. All right, looks pretty good. Now, this other area here are the tripod legs. 
uh, we're going to make a mask. We're going to mask that out. Now, with the later versions of uh, Premiere, what you're going to do is you, you make an opacity mask. So up here in Motion, oh, I'm sorry, right over here, Opacity. Actually, we'll flip this closed. Opacity. And now with these tools, you can create uh, an Opacity mask. So actually, we can just use, uh, we, well, we could use any one of these. Uh, I'll just use the Pen tool. No special reason. And just mask this area out. Yeah, we don't want that. So we basically, we want to keep the area that's red. We want to keep that in and get rid of the rest. So there we go. So this made an opacity mask. So now uh, you're seeing the red background through it. Watch if I turn the eyeball off here. You see it's all black like that. Now let's uh, just give it a quick zip through. Make sure we didn't mask out anything we want to we want to keep in uh the only trouble is i'm gonna have something on the bottom uh it's gonna look funny i want the rice like crawls in from the edge so that's gonna look a little funny so what we can do is uh, we can enlarge the whole thing a little bit uh, and that might be all right so we'll go up here to motion a scale we can scale it up a pinch. Let's move this up a pinch using the controls on the side there. I think that'll be all right. Let's see. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Good enough anyway. Okay, uh, almost there. Uh, I want to create a gradient background here. So now the gradient is actually called a ramp. It's a ramp effect. So over here in my effects, I'm going to type in the word ramp. Oh, here we go. Generate ramp. And I'm going to drag it on top of my red background. Like so. Oh, not too bad. So anyway, if I was doing this from scratch over here, uh, you could put in your start and end color. Uh, I just want to adjust this a little bit. So we're going to use start of ramp over here. We can change the position of where the ramp starts. I think this is what we want. And now also, maybe we don't want it to be so dramatic. Uh, maybe we just want to like a light gray to a slightly darker gray. Uh, let's start on the bottom. Okay, maybe something like that. And instead of black, we'll just use something not quite so dark. So it's a little more subtle. Maybe that's too subtle. Okay, uh, that's not bad. Now, I just want to do one more thing. Uh, now, of course, at a ramp, the bottom is lighter and the dark is darker. It sort of looks like light is coming in from the bottom. So what might make this look a little bit better is if we uh, ch we give this a drop shadow. Now we'll probably want the shadow to go up to match our lighting here. So I could come back over here, start typing in drop shadow. Here we go, perspective drop shadow. Why it's in perspective, I don't know. I'll put it on top of my a clip over here and now in our effects panel we can adjust this so I don't want the light going that way I want the light going up so we'll have to change the direction oh, there we go I think that's okay uh, distance maybe just a little bit more let's soften it a little bit Oh, let's bring the opacity down a bit. Up into the softness. Went the wrong way. Okay, pretty good. Uh, let's take one more look. Only this time we'll um, we'll do full quality. And I'll hit the tilde key. 
to go full screen and see what we get. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, so I hope you'll be able to use these techniques with your own work. There's other ways to do this also, but I think this is a good way. Okay, so I hope you had fun, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>